In this video, we'll take a look at how to conduct the independent samples t-test using the Data Analysis Tool Pack in Excel. Notice we have an example here on the screen, and in this example we've got two groups. The first group here all own an iPhone, and the second group do not own an iPhone. Notice that there's 15 people in each of these two groups. And what we did in this study, in this hypothetical study, is we asked the 30 people whether they owned an iPhone or not, we asked them how likely they were to purchase their next product from the manufacturer in question. I think we all know who the manufacturer is of the iPhone. Uh, so how likely are they to purchase their next product from that same manufacturer, whether they own an iPhone or they do not? And they had the ch um, opportunity to answer from one to seven on a scale where one was not at all likely and seven was extremely likely. And then these are the scores we see. So the first person who owned an iPhone answered a five towards the extremely likely end of the scale. The second person answered a six and so on. The first person in the no iPhone group answered a seven as extremely likely. The second per person answered a five and so on. So what we want to do here to run the analysis in Excel is we're going to go to data and then data analysis and then the data analysis dialog box opens up here and we want to scroll down until we find t-test two sample assuming equal variances. Okay, go ahead and select that and then click OK. And now this box opens t-test two sample assuming equal variances this dialog box. Excel wants to know two variable ranges. Here in variable one range what we're going to do is go ahead and select all of the responses in this first column and we'll go ahead and include the label iPhone as well. That's optional but we'll do that in this example. And then go ahead and click on variable two range and then select all the observations including the label no iPhone for this group. And notice here it says B1 through B16. So that's cell B1 all the way through B16. Since we did select the labels here, we want to go ahead and uh, check on this box, Labels. Now we'll leave the default option at 0.05. We're going to go ahead and run this test using alpha 0.05, so we'll leave that there. If we wanted to use, say, alpha 0.01, then we, go ahead and, we could go ahead and change this accordingly, but we want it at 0.05, so we'll just leave it as the default option. And then for our output options, we'll just go ahead and let Excel um, put the output into a new worksheet. Okay, oh, one last thing, the hypothesized mean difference. If this is left blank as it is here, then th that the default value will be in place, which is just a zero. Okay, and that's what we want. So with that done, let's go ahead and click OK. And then you see a new worksheet tab opens down here, Sheet 4. And what I'm going to do is click in between these two columns where you see the two arrows to expand this a bit so we can see it better. Okay, and I'm going to edit a few of these responses here. Uh, first of all, let's go ahead and increase this, these two observations to two decimal places. And I'll do that by clicking on this button here. And then I'm going to go ahead and select all of these values. I'm going to press down the control key and select all these values just to round this down to three decimal places so it's a little bit more manageable. Okay, and then finally I'm going to go ahead and bold some of the values that I want to call to your attention here. So I'll bold the means and then I'm also going to bold these two values here. I'm doing that by clicking on B. I'm using Control B as a shortcut. And then finally our most important value at the moment is this P, T is less than or equal to T, two tail. So let's bold that. And in fact, to make it a little more obvious, using the control key here, I'm going to select these and I'll dial this up to um, 14 size point font. Okay, so they're really easy to see. Now the first thing we want to do here is we want to focus on this value right here, the P, two tail value. And this really isn't that hard to do in, in statistics in general. We have our decision rule. And the decision rule is as follows. 
If P is less than or equal to 0 0.05, the test is significant. And in other words, that means we'll declare our groups to be significantly different. If P is greater than 0 0.05, the test is not significant. And we will not declare these groups to be significantly different. So all we need to do is look at this p-value, and you can see here it's 0 0.015 when it's rounded to three decimal places. Okay, 0 0.015, if we see which of these two conditions it fits into, you can see it applies to the first one. So therefore, because p is less than or equal to 0 0.05, we will declare the test to be significant, and that means that the ratings that the people gave for these two groups, they are in fact significantly different. Okay, since the test is significant, we'll go ahead and look at these means. And if you look at them, you should be able to uh, ask yourself, okay, which group were, was more likely to uh, purchase their next product from the same manufacturer as the iPhone? And you can see that the iPhone owners were in fact more likely than those who didn't own an iPhone to purchase their next product from the manufacturer in question. Okay, and then what we'll do is we'll use uh, these values here. Actually, I see here I grabbed hypothesized mean difference, and I didn't actually mean to do that one. So let's turn the bold off there, dial that back down. What I want is the T stat. So go to that cell, and then dial that up to 14, click on bold, now we're good to go. Okay, this is what I want. I want the means so that we can tell which group was higher. I would like the DF and the T. I'm going to use those in my written results, which I'll show you in just a moment. And then the p-value, of course, we already talked about. That is what led us to declare the groups to be significantly different. Okay, so for our written results, what we can say is the following. People who owned an iPhone were significantly more likely to purchase a future product from the same manufacturer than those who did not own an iPhone. And then here I put the test, uh, I'm using the t-test, degrees of freedom are in parentheses. This is the t-value that I got in my output. If we go back here, 2.60, that's my t. Notice this is t-stat here. There's my degrees of freedom. And then I write p equals 0 0.015, which is the exact p-value we got in our output. Okay, so because this was significant, I can write my results if you want, if writing results is important, by saying basically that the folks who own the iPhones were more likely to purchase their next product from the manufacturer than those who did not. That's what we're saying here. And then this part here, the way I've got it formatted here is known as APA format or the format of the American Psychological Association. So this is one very common way to format the results. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching.